Tailwind version 4 is stable and this is the biggest release so far. It is much faster and there is no more Tailwind config file. First check out these benchmarks. For full build it's almost 4 times faster which is really impressive. And Tailwind update I still cannot believe is here is the CSS first configuration. So that's the biggest change in this release and they're totally getting rid of the Tailwind config file and they're going full CSS. And this CSS configuration is allowing us to do just about everything that we could do in the old Tailwind configuration file. So we can now add animations, keyframes and everything exactly the same like before but this time through CSS configuration. And if we check all the features in this new release we can see that they were building towards the much better performance. And I think they did it because here we can see that full builds are up to five times faster, although there we saw four and incremental builds over 100 times faster. And then they call this one design for the modern web, which is basically they added cascade layers and registered custom properties with add property and the color mix, which is really a great addition also to this release. Then we have simplified installation, fewer dependencies, zero configuration. We are going to cover that one later. We are going to upgrade the Next.js project from version 3 to version 4. And they created the CLI, which is really awesome and it's really easy to do that. Then they created the tight integration for maximum performance with VIT. And VIT is a French word. It means quick. If you are calling it white, you're doing it wrong. Then we have automatic content detection. All of template files are discovered automatically with no configuration required, so that is awesome. Even less things for us to do. Then we have built-in import support, no additional tooling necessary for bundling multiple CSS files. CSS first configuration, we covered that one and I'm still surprised they really did it. We are getting rid of the tailwind config file. Then we have CSS theme variables, so all of our design tokens exposed as native CSS variables so we can access them anywhere. Awesome. Then we have dynamic utility values and variants, so we can stop guessing what are we putting for our padding, for example. If you have like padding 12, then padding 14, padding 16, this one is going to receive also 13, 15, etc. So we cannot make a mistake and that it doesn't work. So this is really nice. I mean, this was handled before by different dependencies, but now we can just rely on Tailwind itself. Then we have the modernized P3 color palette, a redesigned more vivid color palette. We can check it out. So here we can see that they upgraded the entire default palette from RGB to this one. I don't know how to pronounce this Okluch and taking advantage of the wider gamut to make the colors more vivid. I think this is also a great addition to this release. And then we have the container queries. So first class APIs for styling elements based on their container size, no plugins required. They said here no plugins required because for this one we were using the dependency I think it is called Tailwind Container Queries, so we can get rid of that one also. They have it now inside the Tailwind. And then we have this new 3D Transform Utilities. I really love this update. So now we can basically, we have things like Rotate X, Rotate Y, Scale Z, Translate Z, and we can create something like this. For this one also we were using different libraries, so now we can do it with Tailwind. I think it really looks awesome. And we can create also, look at this sphere. This is really awesome thing that we can do with Tailwind only. And I think this is going to bring bunch of new like UI libraries and different things like in ShedCN maybe for some 3D objects. We are going to see how is that one going to look. Then we have the expanded gradient APIs. And we saw it, so th those were those spheres, radial and conic gradients. And this is also awesome, a starting style support, a new variant where we can use to create enter and exit transitions. So here we can see in the example that we have this transition discrete. And if I refresh my screen, for example, you'll see that we have some like small transitions. So here we have opacity zero, but we could here 
create something like some fade in or something like that. So this is working in Tailwind without any JavaScript. So I think this one is also a great addition. And we have a not variant, so we can say if something is not happening, put this kind of styling. We didn't have that. I think this one is going to be useful. We'll see, especially for groups and something like that. And even more new utilities and variants, including support for color scheme, field sizing, and complex shadows like inert. So we can see also the examples. We have inset shadow, inset ring, field sizing, and bunch of new stuff here. We are going to test everything on some of our future projects. I'm not going to do it now. So those are basically all the new features inside of this release. And now we can upgrade the Orkish AI Next.js project from version 3 to version 4 and let's see how hard is it going to be. So on this same page we have here the upgrade guide, here it is, and we're going to that one. So here we can see that they created the new CLI for upgrading from version 3 to version 4. And this one should do the vast majority of the heavy lifting for us. So basically this command should upgrade everything and everything should work with the new Tailwind version 4 configuration. So we have here the Orkish AI Next.js framework. It's built in ShadCM and it's Next.js 15. And we are going to put in this command inside of our terminal and we're going to see if that's going to work. So I'm just typing it in npx tailwind, I just don't need this dollar sign here, tailwind CSS upgrade next, and now something is happening, searching for CSS files, okay, so it's linking our tailwind, tailwind config ts, and it's putting it inside the globals.css, migrating all the JavaScript configuration files, everything again from the configuration, configuration, and it migrated everything to global CSS, then we installed package tailwind CSS post CSS and removing auto prefixer, migrated post CSS configuration and everything should be upgraded. So let's see if everything is working. So first thing I'm going to do is to go to Orkish and Next.js framework and refresh and everything seems in place. Let's see, let's try it out. So give me 10 Orkish names if anything is out of the ordinary, but everything seems normal. I mean, this is a simple project, so it's not something full of some animations or something, but it has ShadCN. So I thought maybe it's not going to work. Let's see here for buying tokens. Everything looks okay. Okay, let's see the code. So here in cursor, if we go to all the changed files, we can see bunch of things here happening. So tailwind.config.ts is completely deleted and we have now everything inside of our globals.css. And because this one here is ugly, I'm going to open it manually like this so we can check it out. So here we have imported the tailwind CSS and tailwind CSS animate. So this one is new and this one is pretty much everything the same color border primary etc but here it is here we have our accordion animation so this one is coming from shed cn then we have our keyframes so everything that we see here was inside of the tailwind configuration file and we can see it here so here in the old tailwind file that is now deleted we can check our animations and keyframes, here it is for example. So this one, this entire keyframes object is now moved here. So everything is inside the CSS file. And here is the animation. So we have here animation object, accordion down, accordion up, and we saw that one here. Awesome. So this one is really impressive. And we can see also that the upgrade script changed some of our ShedCN files. So here is badge, for example. Let's see what it added. So here we had inline flex item center, rounded full border. Everything is pretty much the same font semi bold transition colors. So here, instead of focus outline none, now it is focus outline hidden. Okay, so that's the difference. Then we have the button and here also some shadow sm shadow access shadow access so it is giving 
some shadow properties now then we have the card what we have here also for shadows and yeah bunch of shadows here but it is a good thing that this one is happening automatically with their cli script and everything is being updated and i just want to see package.json so here okay so tailing css to 4.0 then this auto prefixer is totally gone and that's it from here so we saw that one also on the terminal when we migrated to version 4 and that is pretty much it so i don't have to do basically anything i can now just commit everything and push and it is going to work with tailwind version 4. i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions for me you have the comments or join the discord channel we have a tavern there we are sitting by the fire and talking about bunch of stuff so join the horde subscribe